I have no idea what's going on. Um, now I see a second camera coming up. Um, I, I turn this camera off. Slow internet detected. That's what I've been, it's been saying all morning. Okay, let's see if any of that helped. Um, right now I've got three cameras running out of the five. The uh, well, I've got. I actually I only have three cameras running. The fourth camera we don't even start. That's the one for Instagram. We don't even start that until um, we're done with all our preliminaries. Which, because of all this, now we've eliminated some of the <laughs> equipment that we've been running. Um, so as for worship today, I, I'm, all I can do is apologize. Um, we had some great anointed songs picked out, and we couldn't get them to uh, play. And um, as you can tell, I'm on the other side of the cameras, so I, uh, I have control. Uh, well, to some degree. <laughs> so uh, anyway, all right, well... Uh, welcome to our Sunday morning service. This is not the norm. Uh, normally, our cameras are working, and and occasionally there's a glitch, but this is the worst I've seen it. Uh, they were going on, coming off, almost in a pattern. It almost makes me feel like somebody was purposely interfering with our broadcast, and I don't know who can do that, but um, things seem to have calmed down now, so bear with us as we move forward. We don't quit. We don't just throw our hands up and say, ah, I quit. Let's just, we'll, we'll wait till Tuesday night and have our Bible study. You know, no, I'm not going to do that. If I have to shut off everything else except one camera, we'll do that. But I don't believe we'll have to do that. Things seem to have calmed down now. And so, praise God. Now, now you understand, if, if something happens, if the picture goes frozen or off the air momentarily, from what I'm seeing, it would come back on. But I believe now that it's, it's straightened out. Amen. So I am not going to try and, and get the worship songs going again because that's another computer that, that takes uh, Wi-Fi space with whatever. I don't know. I don't understand all that terminology. Uh, and then we have a monitor that's connected to that and a camera. that's They're all connected for the worship. So maybe that was our major problem. You know, the devil doesn't like worship. He hates it when you praise and worship the Lord. So I think we ought to just go ahead and do that. Father, we praise you this morning. We give you glory. We give you honor. Jesus, we lift you up and exalt you as our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer. We declare that Jesus is Lord. Lord, you are our Savior, our Redeemer, our Healer, our Baptizer, our soon coming King. And Father, we praise you as Almighty God, Creator of the universe, but also our Heavenly Father and also our covenant partner. And we praise you, Father, for all three of those positions that you hold into our lives. Father, we praise you for the opportunity to teach and to preach and minister your word today. And I thank you, Father, that the anointing right now is flowing forth in Jesus' name. I thank you for signs and wonders and miracles, healings and deliverances, answered prayer. I thank you for uh, the people being born again and spirit-filled through this ministry this morning in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. We give you glory, Father. We magnify you as our Father, our God, our covenant partner. For you are a covenant-keeping God, Father, and you keep covenant with us. And we are more than conquerors. We are the head and not the tail. We are above only and not beneath. We are winners, not losers, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for that, Father. Thank you for sending Jesus to do that for us. We give you praise and glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What we bind is bound. What we lose is loose. So all that nonsense is bound up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, again, welcome to uh, Pastor Bill Emmons. This is Covenant Faith Center, CFC Ministries International, uh, our, our main um, 
headquarters here is in the Tulsa, uh, uh, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma area now. Uh, and uh, when, when I ask you to pray for us, I, I'm absolutely serious because the devil has harassed us far enough in, in a lot of areas. And we're, we're not putting up with it. We've had all that we're willing to take. We weren't, we're not willing to take even what we've had, but we're putting our foot down saying that's enough in the name of Jesus. And if you've had challenges, seems like one after another, they've been coming against you, financial challenges, mental, emotional, physical challenges, challenges with your, your spouse or your children or your boss on the job or coworkers uh, or the city the government, the IRS, whatever it is, if you've been having challenges, I come against that in the name of Jesus. I command every one of these plans, strategies, weapons uh, that have been formed against you to cease and desist, to fall to the ground dead and ineffective against you in the name of Jesus. I command every yoke, every thing the devil's put on you be broken now in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we praise you and we thank you for that. What we bind is bound, what we loose is loose, and we bind up the work of the devil and demons in these people's lives that are watching, and we declare they are free this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, um, I, now that I get down to it, um, let me check my notes off here. I have to make myself a checklist, kind of like pilots do. Mine's not near as long or, or severe. Okay, we've done that one. We've done that one. Uh, we've done that one. Uh, we've done that one. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I just have to make sure that when we start our Instagram feed that I write down the start time so I know. Because we only get an hour on Instagram. I, I don't know why. Uh, but... Um, Anyway, well, I think we've got everything moving in the right direction now. Praise God. Well, hallelujah. I, I, Mary, are you? Pastor, Pastor Mary, I'm talking to you. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Um, I, I don't know what else I need to do. Like I said, I'm behind the cameras, well, except for one camera. And my our guest this morning uh, is somebody I've known for 50, 53 years. 54 years. 54 years. Mm -hmm been married to for 53 plus years. And uh, uh, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't change it for nothing. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, I'm going to click over to Pastor Mary. I believe that it's going to work. And Pastor Mary, you ready? There we go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Did you start Instagram? Oh, um, Instagram. Okay. Did I just push that little circle? Uh, okay. Push. <laughs> This is the day the Lord hath made, and we are rejoicing, and we're glad in it. Pastor asked me to do the prosperity scripture before I get into the word, so that's what we're going to do. Um, God, is full, God is the unfailing, unlimited source of my supply. My financial income now increases as the blessings of the Lord overtake me. God's unfailing, unlimited source of supply. You know, we need to realize that God has an unlimited source of supply spirit, soul, and body for all of us because of Jesus. It's so good. You know, over in Deuteronomy, and it comes from Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 2. Uh, if you read it, it says that all these blessings, and if you've read the blessings of Abraham, it covers every area of your life, your physical life. You know, it's not just spiritual blessings, but we need the physical blessings in the life we live. All these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou hearken. You know that word hearken is interesting. I looked it up years ago. Hear what the word of God says to you intelligently. Declare it and be obedient to it. Speak it and then do what it says. That's all we have to do. Obedience, <laughs> living in the blessing of God is not that hard if we just obey God's word. He said, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Or my, I don't know if I have the other way around. Burden is light, my yoke is easy. <laughs> <laughs> my burden is light and my yoke is easy. It's not hard to live for the Lord. If you keep your head right, if you keep your eyes on the word of God, stay focused. It's not hard. God wants, in verse 8 it says, And the Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses. 
that's not the one I wanted to read. And the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee. I love that. The Lord shall. He shall bless thee in the land which the Lord God has given thee. God will command these blessings on you. You know, you and I have to get in our mind. What God says is true. What he says he means. And if he says he'll command it, it will be commanded as long as you do your part. Everything in the word of God is conditional. You do your part, God always does his part. You do your part, God always does his part. It talks about being overtaken. It talks about God commanding these blessings to come on you. So if they're not on you, you know, I get a picture of the Lord. I close my eyes many times and I see the throne of God. And I, I, I see his throne and then right next to him on the right side, I see the throne of Jesus. And I see myself, because the Bible says we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. I see myself next to Jesus saying, Lord, am I missing it somewhere? Why are these blessings? Why am I not walking in the fullness? And the Holy Spirit never keeps anything from you if you ask him. He begins to show me what area I'm talking about. Is he won't withhold it from you and when he doesn't withhold it from you now you know you have the answer and you can go forth and receive what God has for you it says God is God is the unfailing unlimited source of my supply spirit soul and body not only in your spirit but in your soul your mind and your will and your emotion and your body physically taking care of us praise God so as pastor said read Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 1 through, I believe it's 14, and then, you know, I'd go a bit further. I would read the curses. I never used to, but years ago, Brother Hagin said, you know, you need to read the curses to find out what you're redeemed from, and so I started reading them, and every time I read them, I'd say, Father, I thank you. I'm, con I'm redeemed from being cursed in the city and cursed in the field. I'm redeemed from the fruit of my body being cursed, the fruit of my ground. Go over them and decide. I'm not having that in my life because Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Why should I have that? And it really makes you happy. It really gives you joy knowing that this thing that the travel, the devil has tried to put on you doesn't belong to you. Don't take it. Resist it and it cannot stay. And then verse 21, also every sickness and every plague, not even written in the book of the law, it says the Lord will cause it. it it will cause to come on you because, remember that progressive verb, anyway. Um, what we say is, because I do walk in the word of God, there is not one sickness or disease the devil can bring that can come on me because I'm redeemed from it all. Whether it's written in the curses or not, I am the redeemed. So, praise God. Okay, I'm going to pray and then get into the word. Father, I thank you for the mighty Holy Spirit that dwells within me. I thank you that you gave that spirit to teach us, Father. So as I open my mouth, I believe he speaks through my lips. And he speaks what needs to be spoken today in the name of Jesus. And I believe that those that are listening have ears to hear, eyes that see, and a heart that perceives or understands what God, the Father God, is trying to reveal to them today in Jesus' name. I'm going to start out. The name of it is Staying Steady. You know, I worked yesterday on my, on my notes and I got up this morning, it was like, this is not right. This is not what I'm supposed to be ministering today. I don't know if you've ever had that feeling, but it's like, well, where do I go from here? <laughs> I spent my time yesterday putting my notes together. And the Lord is so kind and so wonderful. And the Holy Spirit shows you. So I'm just going to be led today by what he shares me shares with me to share with you. This week we have walked, uh, we have listened to the Believers Convention, which is something Pastor encouraged everybody to do. We've been in the Word so many years, Pastor and I, over 50 years. And since the Believers Convention has begun in Fort Worth, Texas, Texas that's uh, Brother Copeland's ministry, we have not missed, a, we have not missed um, any of the services. Mainly, if we're not there physically, we're at home with the station on and we watch it. We shut everything down and we watch it. And I was thinking this this week and I was, as I was watching it, what, Lord, do you want me to get out of this? And what, what he shared with me was just stay steady in the word. Everything I've been listening to, as I listen to all these services, we, 
We listen Monday, well, actually Sunday night with Flashpoint, and then Monday all the way through till Friday. We didn't listen on Friday. Just a few we got in, but I babysat with my granddaughter on Friday, so we were kind of busy with her. But <clears throat> we listen to 20 <laughs> services, <laughs> 20 messages, because there's five a day, and we listen from Monday through Thursday. That's a lot of word. And we sit down with our tablet and our Bible and listen. I mean, we don't just walk around and work and listen. We pay attention. We sit there just like, God, what do you have for me out of this? What am I supposed to get from it? And so I was asking the Lord, and what he shared with me was, um, just I'm building your faith to stay steady. Just continually stay in the Word of God. In every ministry, that's what they were saying. It doesn't matter what's happening you're getting to the other side. You know, uh, many times I wake up in the morning. Now, I, I'm just going to be going here and there probably because I'm not following <laughs> the notes I made yesterday. So I'm trusting the Lord. But the Lord in 2001 gave me a poem. And it's a poem I know by heart because it comes to me all the time. It's a, it's a blessing. It's, this is, let me see. <laughs> now that I say I know it really, really well. Um, uh, it's, this is the day, this is the hour for you to triumph in goodness and power. The end is approaching, the end is near, so gird up your loins and run on without fear. I've given you a hope, I've given you a cause, I've given you a reason. Now use all your spiritual laws. Victory is imminent, my word is true. Battles have been fought and vision renewed. Run on, run on, obtain the prize, not only for you, but for many other lives. I'm coming to get you, I'm coming to take you away, grab hold of others. Let them hear what I have to say. This is the day, this is the hour. My blood has been shed. Now it's time for victory and power. So many times I wake up in the morning and that's what I hear. When you get something from the Lord, it's inspired of the Holy Ghost. You never forget it. I mean, there, the Lord hasn't, I, I don't have a thousand things, you know, that are so, so impressed in my heart that I can just, just say them like, like that poem, but that poem was from the Holy Spirit and it was meant to encourage me. So every day that it comes up in my thinking, I say it out loud, it encourages me. This is the day. Today is the day. This is the hour to walk in, in victory and power. So God wants you and I every day to walk in victory and power. We're going to the other side. We're going to the other side. Remember, you know, you and I may take a road. And, and it may be a straight road, but it may be a bumpy road because a lot of roads, you know, they've been paved, but they've been used in the they've been weather um, worn and they're bumpy and all kinds of things are going on. But you must drive that road knowing that, that you're getting to the other side. And as you walk in faith, you're getting victoriously. And you don't have to look at what's going on around you. You have to keep your focus on Jesus and the victory that you get when you live for him every day. Over in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 4 and 5, I'm going to turn over there. I could quote it, but it's important, it says, to keep your eyes on the word of God. Too many times we take the word, memorize it, because we've said it over and over and over again, and then we don't look at it anymore. And sometimes it starts getting a little twisted. We start mixing in two scriptures instead of just that one scripture. And we lose some of what God is trying to say to us. Over in uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. Right now in this day, we need to trust in the Lord. Years ago, I was looking at the word trust, and I was looking at T-R-U-S-T. -T, and I got trust in the tremendous reliance upon salvation truth. I thought, that is so good, Father. Tremendous reliance upon your word. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. But then a few years back, the Lord said, we're changing something. Instead of tremendous, I want total salvation too. And what the Lord was saying in your life, instead of tremendous, I want total reliance on my word. I want you to look to my word for everything. Everything, whether it's spiritual, mental, physical. I want you to constantly go to the word of God, find the answers there, and lean on my word with everything you've got. So it says, trust in the
But God said the peace of God that passes all understanding would reign, guard, control our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus if we what? Rejoiced in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I used to say that all the time. Rejoice. But I was getting rejoice all the time. I was missing rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in your salvation that Jesus has provided for you. No matter what's going on in your life, rejoice. Be glad. Brighten up. Be excited. Stir up your heart. He's coming. Maybe today. Maybe tomorrow. May not be for a year. May not be for five years. But it could be today. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness and patience be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. What does that mean? It means he's there with you every day. Whether you're walking straight and narrow, doing it the way you're supposed to be, or you're missing it. Maybe you lost your temper. Maybe you're upset with somebody. He's there. So you have to realize that. It says, um, and let the peace, it says, I'm sorry. Here I just said, turn to the scripture so you get it accurate. <laughs> and then I quote it in. And it's not being accurate. So I'm going to read those. Those are Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Here it says, let your moderation. That word moderation doesn't just mean um, moderate in things. It means, if you look it up in the concordance, in the, the Greek, that word means gentleness and patience. So it says, let your gentleness and patience be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be worried or anxious about nothing. Think about it. Trust in the Lord with all that heart. Be worried or anxious about nothing. What's going on in our government? How can you pray about things if you're not aware? What, what pastor ministers that give us the news that we trust, the news in faith, we have prophets we listen to that we really listen to because what they say does come to pass. Um, and we have teachers we listen to because they teach us the sound word of God. So it says, be careful or anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. What it is, what you're going through. Picture the throne of God. You, you, you need to get that picture. It helps when you pray. See the Father. He is your Father. He's just not Jehovah God. You're in the family now if you're born again. If you're not, you need to get born again. And you realize that God is actually your Father. You become part of the family. He loves you so much. He sent his Son to save you, to bring you into the kingdom of God so you would spend eternity with him in heaven, with the whole church, with the whole family of God. So you bring your request to him. <clears throat> It says prayer and supplication with what? Thanksgiving. Be thankful because now you prayed. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. You go to Jesus and say, Jesus, you said to put me in remembrance. So the word says this. This is what's happening. And I believe this is coming to pass. We were just praying for somebody, my family member. And uh, we had prayed that they were healed. And then I just got a report a few days ago that symptoms began to arise again and we said no we already prayed and you already took care of that so we are not receiving that in the name of Jesus and I just wouldn't let my think, self think about it I just kept praising no healed by the stripes of Jesus and then wasn't long and I got another report saying well he's that person's back to normal again well that person is going to stay normal in the name of Jesus why because we prayed and we thank God for it in Jesus no in Jesus name and then it says, and that peace, the peace of God that passes all understanding. I don't know if you've ever had that peace, but you and I should have. The peace of God where people say, how can you become at a, in a time like this? So much is going on. How can you relax and enjoy the presence of God? Because I've prayed and God has it. You know about this country. I keep going over to Second Chronicles um, 714 where it says that my people you know, who are called by my name, would seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. If they would pray, God would hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. I say that so many times to the Lord. I am not going to get anxious about this country. I believe that you are doing what you said you are, you said you're healing our land. I, I thank you for the president that you've anointed. I thank you for the perfect vice president. I thank you for the men and women you have trained and called, raised up 
to work alongside of him. I thank you for the House of Representatives, Father, that you place in there, men and women, if they're not going in line with the Constitution of the United States, they're not going in line with the Word of God, which is how the Constitution was written according to God's Word, in line with God's Word, then I ask you to remove them and put those godly men and women that will will listen and obey your word to keep this country on the right course in Jesus' name. And when I pray that, then I, the anxiety leaves because I believe my father heard me. I spend time praying in the spirit if the anxiety is still there. or what, And you know when fear starts to come. It starts in the middle of your being. You just know something's not right. Something's not right. Fear tries to get in. Whatever, and you just pray in the spirit because the <laughs> praying in the tongues you're praying the perfect will of God. Besides being born again, that's the second most wonderful thing. I thank God for the blessed and mighty Holy Spirit, the comforter, the teacher, the counselor that brings all things to your remembrance. He, everything you need to know, he will bring it back to your remembrance. He'll show you things to come prepare you <laughs> before things come. Sometimes you don't know why you're doing what you're doing, but he's preparing you for what is coming. He's showing you, maybe you don't have it in black and white, but you just know, and you just do those things you're led to do. See, that's why we need to pray in the Spirit. How else can he get across to you what you need to do if you spend no time praying in tongues? You need to pray in the Spirit as I need to pray in the Spirit. So not only do I take the Word, believe it, and speak it, but I pray in the Spirit to back it up, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Every day I pray in the Holy Ghost. I try to pray an hour every day, sometimes more, sometimes I get less, but I make it a point to pray every day. I don't want to be caught. Um, I don't want to be caught not prepared in any situation. I don't want to be caught not knowing what to do. You and I need to live prepared. And he shows us how to stay in my word day and night, meditate my word day and night. And then he says, pray in the spirit. When you know not how to pray, turn over to the spirit because he'll pray the perfect will of God through you. So first, trust in the Lord with all that heart. And then rejoice in the Lord always. And then Proverbs 17, verse 22, it says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. You and I need to stir up the joy every day. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth, when he was a young man, spent a little bit of time in London and spent time with Smith Wigglesworth when he was older. And he said to Brother Wigglesworth, he said, um, What do you do when you first get up in the morning? And Brother Wigglesworth said, I jump out of bed and dance for 10 minutes. I dance in the Lord. What is he doing? He's stirring himself up. He's not listening to all the things the devil tries to put in his thinking when he first wakes up. He gets up and rejoices in the Lord. <laughs> He's brightening up. He's making himself be happy. Body, get in line with the Word of God. Mind, think according to the Word of God. Jump and leap and shout for great is your reward when you live for the Lord. So that's that's what we need to do. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Proverbs 15, 13 says, A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. When you have a merry heart, you can smile easily. <laughs> you, have, you have a song in your heart. You have good things to say to people. In Proverbs 15, 15, it says, A merry heart has a continual feast regardless of circumstances. doesn't matter what's going on around about you. just doesn't matter. What matters is what's going on inside. Because what's going on inside will show on your face. What's going on inside will show in what you say, in how you say it. People that answer the phone like, hello, <laughs> they don't sound very merry or cheerful. People that, you know, you wake up in the morning and you say good morning and they grunt. It doesn't sound like that merry heart is coming forth. You and I need to practice getting ourselves to walk in the joy of the Lord, to have a merry heart. Why? Because we are the redeemed of the Lord. I'm going to heaven. God is my father. Throughout all eternity, I'll be with him. The Holy Spirit will never leave me forever. He'll always be with me. Jesus, I will be able to walk and talk to face to faith, face during the millennial reign and then forevermore. I mean, we have good things to rejoice about. Paul said, what is all this trials and tribulations? They're nothing compared to what we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, <clears throat> Job said in uh, chapter 23, verse 12, it said, I have esteemed the words 
of his mouth more than my necessary foods. How much time do you and I spend in the Word of God? It should be first thing every day. And if it's not, it should be the last thing before you go to bed. It should be sometime every day you and I should be in the Word of God. Eyes on the words. Eyes on the pages. Whether you use your device, whatever it is, you get the Word of God out. And say, it. find scriptures that you need for that day. Everybody needs, this is the day the Lord hath made. I will. What have you done? You've made a decision. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Um, now I want to turn over, and this is what came to me today. Turn over to Matthew chapter 11. When we first got turned on to the word of God, it was, uh, well, I got born again in the Assembly of God Church. Uh, oh, my husband is who took me to that church, and that's where I got born again. I was a Catholic. I was <laughs> um, a Catholic that thought I would be a Catholic forever. I mean, very religious, very, very, very religious. And uh, in fact, I'm embarrassed to say it, but uh, there was a friend I had that got married in a Protestant church, and because we were taught not to go to Protestant churches, <laughs> they were not, they were not a good place to go. I would not go to her wedding in that church. No, I'd go to the after. You know, but I wouldn't go into that church. How terrible. I mean, religion just does such crazy things to you. They just logically don't make sense. <laughs> so anyway, I got free from that in the Assembly of God Church. I got born again. But then we heard the word of faith, which really set Bill and I free. And Brother Copeland, or not Brother Copeland, Brother Copeland we love. And he has just carried on from where Brother Hagen started us off. Um, Brother Hagen's some of his favorite scriptures that we would read and study was Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 26. And I just want to go through that for a few minutes because it's so good. Jesus answering said unto them, talk about the fig tree. You know, I should just read about the fig tree. I'm going to turn on the see chapter. On the morrow, when they were hungry, this is Mark chapter 11, verse 12, um, and come from Bethany, seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he said, if happily, he might find any things thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. So he came to the fig tree to get fruit, and the fig tree did not do its job. It didn't bear leaves. So <laughs> it spoke to Jesus. I'm not going to meet your need. Jesus answered it. He spoke to it. No man will eat fruit of the hereafter forever. Now over in verse 22, well, start with verse 20. In the morning they passed by and saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Remember, they heard what he said to the fig tree. And Peter, calling to remember, and said to him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, he said, Peter is saying, how did it wither that fast? A tree doesn't dry up that fast. I mean, <laughs> takes a while for the tree to dry up. Um, and it, in 24 hours, the tree is dried up and dead. How, how much, what happened? How much power in your words? And Jesus, Andrew said unto, said unto them, have faith in God or have the faith of God. You and I have been dealt the measure of faith. Over in Romans chapter 12, verse three, it says, we are in the same measure of faith. That's talking to, to born again, spirit filled believers or born again believers. When you get born again, you now have the faith of God. He deposits it in your spirit. When you get born again, you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. I'm not that old person. When I got born again, I got a brand new spirit. It was, it was the spirit of the Lord came in and recreated me. Now I have the same spirit he has. The spirit of God lives within me. That's who I am. So anyway, now we have God's faith. Have the faith of God. And verse 23 says, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into this sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith, shall he shall have whatsoever he saith. The first thing I want you to think about is faith. The Bible says in, in um, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, It's impossible to please God without faith. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. So, Faith is very important. You have to believe. Last time I ministered, I ministered on hope. What is hope? It's a confident, favorable expectation of good things to come. It's expecting. Expecting. Faith brings your expectation into the 
the here and now. What are you expecting? What the word says. What's promised in the word I expect, that's my hope, my service, into the here and now. If I'm expecting the word to work in healing, I speak to the symptoms and tell them, you don't belong to me. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. I expect every one of those symptoms to leave my body. Why? Because it says Christ has, surely Jesus has borne my sickness and carried my pain. Surely, absolutely, verily, truly, without a doubt. I expect that. I can go to the Father. Jesus is right there and I show him in the word. This is what it says. I'm going to take So in Jesus' name, I thank you, Father. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Now, faith is working because I'm expecting my body to react to the word of God. Faith is causing that. When I say it out of my mouth, <clears throat> I'm giving life to those words and I get up and act like it. So it says here, you can have what you say. Faith is important, but speaking your faith is number two. You and I have to speak what we believe. When you see it in the word of God and, and you see that it's good, it's a good thing. When I first got born again, I realized it was a good thing. I could talk to God. I could talk. I could have a relationship with Jesus. I never knew that. Raised as a Catholic, I never knew that. I, I talked to God. I'm, there was one time after I got out of um, out of high school, I, I moved to Milwaukee. I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Then we moved 60 miles away. And then after I got out of high school, I went back and uh, was living in Milwaukee for a while and had a, was going to school and had a... Um, was living at a, uh, a Catholic uh, residence club, which was just for girls. And uh, you get served your breakfast and that's all you get. They expect you to have a job. You, you know, it's a place to live and you have breakfast and you go out and do your work. Not paycheck that week. And so I had no money left. I used all my money and I had breakfast and I was hungry. And I said, God, I'm hungry. I knew God was there. I didn't know him as my father. I didn't know Jesus as my Lord. I'm walking down the street and said, God, I am so hungry. I, would, I want some food. And I looked down and there were $2 at my feet. <laughs> I don't know where they came from. They were just $2. This is in the 60s where you could buy a hamburger and French fries and a Coke, whatever, for a dollar. So I took the $2 and I went to the Catholic Church and put $1 in the offering, because they had, you can go in the Catholic Church, used to be, I don't know how it is anymore, the doors were always open, go in, and they had a little offering thing, you could put your money in and leave, and I was so thankful. I said, God, okay, I'm going to get a Big Mac. And so I ran to the church, put the dollar in, took the other dollar, went and got dinner. I mean, God hears you, even before you're born again. So I knew him as God, but I had no personal relationship. None at all. And when I got born again, that's good news. I can I can talk to my father, God, and he can hear me. But now I'm getting more good news. Now I'm knowing that I can have a relationship with him. Now I'm finding out that I have the faith of God when I got born again. And now I'm finding out that I can have what I say if I believe that the things I say come to pass. So that means I better start saying what I want to come to pass instead of just saying all kinds of foolish things. I have a book here that I just love. Now, there are a lot of books I've read on confession. This is The Law of Confession by Bill Winston. It's so good. It just breaks it down so easy for you to understand why you should watch your words, why you should realize that God gave you words to create, not to destroy. We can destroy with words. We can create with words. I remember one man said about his son, um, Oh, that guy doesn't have any personality. I thought, how can you say that about your son? I, you know, it just it just amazes me what some people can say about their children. Whereas he could have said, my son has a wonderful personality. Whether he saw it in him or not, because you develop in people what you say to them. Many of them, I mean, you have a little tiny baby. And when you get that baby home, I used to say to our children, from the time I had our first, I'd say, Jesus loves you. Their Lord and Savior, everyone. I'd say, Mommy loves you, Daddy loves you. 
more personal. Jesus. Um, we, he just said you're my girl that's all I got and I thought yes I am see on my forehead is written property of the Lord Jesus Christ I say that all the time I look in the mirror and I say property of the Lord Jesus Christ I belong to him and he belongs to me I belong to him if you're born again you belong to the Father God you can go to him anytime whether the things are good or bad. So the words of our mouth are so important. Peter said, gee, that tree withered already. And then he said, you can have what you say if you believe that the things you say come to pass. I can have what I say. That really got deep into my heart. I don't say foolish things. I don't even tease. A lot of people say, oh, I'm just joking. I don't joke. I say what the word says. That's all I say. I try not to joke. I can't say everything I say is exactly right. And when I miss it, I'm constantly saying, Holy Spirit, please correct me if I miss it. Because I want my words to be creative. When I say I believe I receive, I believe I receive. I want that to come to pass. So I'm not willing to play with my words. I'm only willing to say what the word of God says. And it's taken a long time. You know, when you get born again, <clears throat> all this looks so good. But you hear many people say it, it's a process. It is a process. It's a process of you learning consistently to believe you receive what you say. At first, it just sounds good. And then you got to start to train yourself because you've said so many bad things in the world. You've said so many things you don't want to come to pass. So you have to begin to tr you start to walk the walk. But it's a good walk. And there's 1 John 1, 9 says, if we miss it, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us, wash it away by the blood and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. You just get up and say, oh, I'm not saying that again, by the help of the Holy Spirit. And you just keep walking until you get to the place where you're trying to say everything from the time you get up in the morning till you go to bed at night. And if someone starts talking to you other things, don't respond. You know, I used to think I had to respond to what everybody said, but I'm learning. If it's not in agreement with the word, just listen. Just listen. And what you can do is quietly in the spirit, pray for that person. Father, I believe they're filled with the full, deep, and clear knowledge of God's will for them and all spiritual wisdom. Comprehensive insight into the ways and the purposes of God. Understanding and discerning spiritual things that they walk live and conduct themselves in a manner worthy of you, fully pleasing to you, desiring to please you in all things, that they bear fruit in every good work and steadily grow, steadily grow, steadily grow and increase in and by the knowledge of God with fuller, deeper, clearer inside acquaintance and recognition in Jesus' name. So you don't have to get in involved in their conversation if it's against the word, it's against you, if it's against the people you love. Don't get involved. Just begin to say in your heart, in your mind, you have to say it out loud, just begin. So many times I go to bed and if I can't sleep, I say over and over, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions. I just begin to say the word over and over again. <laughs> the word is health and healing to your flesh. It's wonderful. So we read verse uh, 23, have faith now. You can have what you say. Let's read verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, He's speaking, what things do every desire when you pray, when you go before the Father? What things do every desire when you go before the Father? When you go before him, believe. The, let me see. The th let me see. I want to say, therefore I say unto you, what things do every desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. When do you believe? You hear pastors say over and over again, when you pray. So what do I do so I don't lose track of that? I write down the time and the date normally. I've got times and dates all over the place. What I pray for, the time and the date. So when the, because he will come, the devil will come and say, 
it didn't work. You don't have it. It's not coming. All you have to do, doesn't matter what you feel like. Just go back to the word and say, on this date, at this time I received. It doesn't matter if it feels like you received. You received because you said you received. Your spirit is talking now. Tell your, your soul, it's realm to be quiet. I believe I received in Jesus' name. It says right there, when I prayed, not today, I didn't look out the window and it wasn't there. I guess it didn't work. No, when I prayed, I believed I, I have it. I don't believe I, I have it in the spirit and it's coming into manifestation. Now, that's all wonderful. But let's go down to verse 25. And when you stand praying and receiving, forgive if you have ought against any. That your Father, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Now, wait a minute. We have to have faith. We have to, we have to talk faith. We have to pray and believe we received. And now we have to walk in love. What is walking in love? Walking in love is forgiving. It says right here, verse 26, But if you did not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. If you keep talking about the past, everything that happened in the past, bad things, dealing with other people, you haven't forgiven them. <laughs> if that's all, you need to talk about the future. You and I need to talk about the future more than we talk about the past. What's happening in the future? I believe I receive in the name of Jesus. I believe I receive. We have to walk in love. Brother Copeland, not Brother Copeland, Brother Hagen said something, and I have it in I, I, my Bible. I taped it. I had it. I don't even know when it was. I don't have the date, but years ago, <clears throat> I read this. This is Kenneth W. Hagen, Brother Hagen Sr.'s son writing this. He said, my father often said that he never prayed a prayer for himself that wasn't eventually answered. However, he taught that when he wasn't seeing answers to his prayer, the first place he would look was his love walk. How are we treating? Jesus said to love God first and then to love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's so important. That's <laughs> The first grace commandment is to love God. The second is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So you need to look at your love walk. He asked, am I holding a grudge or harboring bitterness, animosity toward anyone? When he got those answers straight, he'd go back to what he was believing for and refused to budge on his stand. So you go to the Father and say, Father, I am walking in love. I believe this is coming to pass. Holy Spirit, if I'm holding anything against you, feel it to me so I can forgive them, so I can get past that and continue in my love walk. Dad always said, I refuse to, I refuse to permit the least bit of ill in my heart toward anyone. He told me at an early age, son, if you refuse to take offense, you'll never be out of the will of God and you'll never fail to receive his blessings. That's a great lesson packed into that statement. When you're tempted to become offended, ask yourself, is this where I want to get stuck in life? Is this the level of blessing I want to Consequences. Will our harboring offense be worth the price we eventually will pay? It's been said sin will take you further than you want to go and keep you longer than you want to stay. The cost can cost you more than you want to pay. This is certainly true of the sin of offense. Certainly true of, of the sin of walking outside of love. If it's anything that's not done in faith, is sin, the Bible said. When you walk out of love, you're not operating in faith anymore because faith worketh by love. In Galatians, faith worketh by love. As you walk in love toward God, toward his word, toward other people, that's when your faith is activated and it works. It's a clear channel between you, God, and that thing you're believing for. This is certainly true of the sin of offense. It will bring you needless suffering, cause you to say and do things you never thought you would. would. Offense will deter you from your divine destiny. Price to pay. So, what do we get from these scriptures? I get, first of all, I need faith. You know what it says in in um, First Corinthians chapter thirteen, the very last, the very last verse. It says, um, "Let's turn over there so I get it right." 
which is just what I said I would do in the beginning. Now abideth faith, hope, expectation, a confident, favorable expectation of good things to come. Your faith is going to bring that. And love. What love is that? Agape, unconditional love. What is forgiving everybody for anything? Unconditional love. How can I forgive them? Oh, I love them unconditionally. How can I not forgive them? God forgave me. She was the only, Jesus was the only one that could pay the price for my sins, for that sin nature, that horrible sin nature. And it was horrible. I said and did things before I was born again. I wouldn't even tell you horrible things. Now, I didn't kill anybody. I didn't steal, but I did things in my heart. You know, those, those, those sins that you commit in your heart about them and never tell anybody, but they're in there. You know what I'm talking about. Bad thoughts about people, gossiping, all kinds of things. Well, that man died when I got born again. And now I'm now unconditional love flows in my life. And it flows in your life if you allow it. You and I have to allow the things of God to work in our life. You and I have to make a decision. We're going to the other side. And we're going joyfully. And we're going victoriously. We're going triumphantly to the other side with Jesus. He's in the boat with us. He's never left you. He will never leave you or forsake you. I don't care what you've gone through, what you're going through, or what you ever will go through. He will never leave you or forsake you, even to the very ends of the earth. That's something to rejoice about. People say, what do I have to rejoice about there? He's right there with you. And if you spend time in the Word and praying, all the things that are weighing you down will begin to lift because the Holy Spirit will show you he will show you what to do. He will, he will bring that joy. It will bubble up from within. Smith Wigglesworth, before he was even a preacher, an evangelist, he, he was a plumber. And he went into one woman's house and was doing the work, the plumbing, whatever. And she asked what, what he had that, that he made him so joyful. And he never said anything to her about the Lord. It was just his attitude, his atmosphere. I don't know if he was singing, whistling, whatever. But there was a presence about him she wanted. Let there be a presence about us that people want. All the time, night or day, whoever you meet in the store, let that presence of, of the Holy Spirit share, shine, show Jesus to other people. So they want what you've got. They want to be happy every day. Everybody does. Everybody wants to be full of the joy of the Lord. And we have the key. We know how to get there. First of all, we have to walk in faith. Secondly, we have to act our faith out. Faith without course. We have of worship, selling and trading, merchandise, money things. <laughs> it wasn't there for worshiping God. So we have to realize that in order for this joy to bubble up, you and I have to stay in the Word of God. That's what I got from the convention this week. That's what I wanted to share with you. I, it wasn't, you know, <laughs> I wrote down this really good message, <laughs> maybe some other time, but Going on in the world, they're missing every day the joy. God wants to see his children full of joy. You know, we have now a three year old granddaughter, she just had a birthday, and when she comes to see us, she opens the door and runs in, runs to her papa and gives him a big hug and a kiss, runs to me, 
grabs my hand and says, Nana, let's go play with stickers every day. <laughs> she loves to be with us and we love having her. Well, the father wants us to run into the into every day with with our hands open to him saying, Father, I'm so glad to be here today. You've given me another day. What are we going to do today? If you're a homemaker, how do you want me to make my home be today? I know I can fill it with love. I can fill it with song, put on good words. I can keep it clean. I can make good dishes in the kitchen. I can call people. If you go to business, be a shining light in the business place you're working. Let God shine through you and realize that will bring joy to your knowing you're in God's will and you're being a blessing to other people. Okay, so that's what I have for today. We're going to pray and then I'm going to close. Father, I thank you for the word of God. It's so wonderful, Father, and you are so wonderful. We love you, Father, with all of our heart. <laughs> Uh, Pastor Bill Emmons on Facebook, uh, we uh, put on there the information about how you can give the various ways that are available to give. So if uh, you feel impressed to support this ministry, if it's a blessing to you, then by all means, um, get involved with us. Become a, a part of what we're doing, not just, uh, you know, getting blessed and then, you know, moving on. Amen. So I'm going to say goodbye to you. Our Instagram family, we love you guys. Armand, good to have you with us this morning. And we will see you Tuesday night. Amen. Now I just got to figure out how to turn this off. Let's see. All right. There we go. All right. So the rest of you, praise God. Um, as, as Pastor Mary was finishing up there, um, I uh, began to uh, sense, uh, I have to say, in my spirit, plural, um, God wants to heal that. He doesn't want you in that pain. It's, it's when you're in, when your knees are in pain, it's tough to walk. Uh, it's in fact, it can be very distractive and it's hard to do anything. So I want you to, if you're listening now and that describes you, you've got some problems with your knees. I want you to put your hands on your knees and in the name of Jesus, father, I pray for every person watching and listening, whether it's live right now or after the fact. We know there's no time or distance in the spirit, Father. Therefore, there's no time, there's no distance uh, or cutoff time for the anointing. And Father, we know that the anointing is flowing right now. The healing anointing is flowing. And I command that anointing to flow into your knees. In Jesus' name, I command the pain to go, the aching to leave, the stiffness to be gone, and whatever the source of the problem is to heal, to be made whole, to be restored in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, you said lay hands on the sick, they would recover. Well, I'm not able to physically touch the people, but Father, I stretch my hand out toward them as an act of faith. And I command healing, not just on those with knees now. Father, I pray for people with any physical problem from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I command that healing anointing to flow into your body right now. Every symptom I rebuke, I command it to be gone. In Jesus' name, the devil's a liar. You are healed, not sick. You have to begin to think that way. I am the healed. I am not the sick. 
I am the whole, not the person who's, you know, only partially able to walk or partially able to move their hands. Or You got to speak in, in the right terms to get it fixed in your mind that Jesus already paid the price. So I command every symptom in your body to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I pray for people's finances right now. In the name of Jesus, the devil's a liar. He's a thief, and he comes to steal from us. With all this stuff that's been going on in the economy and uh, the decisions that have been made in our government uh, that have cost us, that have uh, cost jobs, that have cost, uh, you know, you, you used to be able to, go to the store and buy a whole bunch of groceries for, you know, a hundred dollars. Now it's $200 or, and I, I just using numbers here, but you know, if you do the shopping, you know how expensive things have gotten, but our God is our shepherd. And it says we shall not want or lack. So father, I pray for people right now that are experiencing a hardship financially because of the things that have been going on. So father, we live in a different kingdom and we rise above the natural world into the realm of the spirit and we tap into your provision, Father. For you said you would supply all of our need according to your riches, not according to our ability, not according to our paychecks, not according to the economy or inflation uh, or interest rates. But Father, you said you would supply all of our need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And finally, you took it a step further. You said that if we delight ourselves greatly in the Lord, that you would give us the very desires of our hearts. And there's, Father, I know there are people watching and listening right now that have had some desires, things they've prayed for, and they've been believing for, and, and maybe have gotten to the point they're about ready to give up. Don't give up in the name of Jesus. Don't quit now. Father, I, pr I pray right now that those desires will begin to manifest in their lives that finances will come in, that if it's, a, if it's something like a new car or a home or clothes or whatever it might be, Father, whatever it is, I pray that according to your word, Father, that their desires are met in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let me give you a quick story. <clears throat> we stood, uh, we're, we, God had spoken to us we restored a car. We had a 1965 Chevy. Now, this was back in the 1970s, uh, around, I'd say around 1974, roughly. Um, we, had, we had a 1965 Chevy, paid for, of course. <laughs> and um, we, I felt impressed to begin to restore it. And it, I mean, it wasn't like it was all torn up or anything, but we did uh, put new tires on it and then uh, any repairs that needed and, and uh, actually put a new paint job on it. And uh, God spoke to us as soon as we got it all done. He says, now I want you to give it to. And he told us the name of a family that uh, were called of God to come back here, actually in Oklahoma, and minister to the people of the Creek Indian tribe. And uh, so we, we just jumped at it. We said, okay, Lord, whatever you want. But at the same time, we had seen in 1970, it must have been, must have been 1973-74 era, because we saw a 1973 Chevy Caprice. And we, we just, if I can say it this way, <clears throat> we fell in love with it. It was just a beautiful style. And a very luxurious feeling and looking and everything. So we, we began to pray and believe God for a 73 Chevy Caprice. But in the meantime, we gave away our, our only transportation, uh, our 65 Chevy. And of course, now, we invited the family over to our house. We had dinner for them. And at the end of dinner, we said, well, we actually invited you over here for more than just fellowship and having dinner. Uh, God told us to give you our car. And so we handed them the pink slip signed off and the keys and said, tonight you're driving home with this car. And they broke into tears and they just, they had been believing God for a new car because they were going to make this trip back here to Oklahoma. They felt their old car wouldn't do it. And God used us to bless them. Well, I thought the next morning I'd wake up and look out into our carport and there would be a, a new 1973 Chevy Caprice sitting there. And the carport was empty. <laughs> so a lot of you have had things like that. You prayed and thought immediately, there it is. And it, it wasn't. 
And um, I got a bit discouraged. And the Lord began to deal with me. And he said, uh, do you still believe in me? I said, yeah. Do you trust me? I said, yes. Do you believe my word is true? I said, yes. He said, do you still believe in, in faith, that faith works? I said, yes. He said, um, uh, do, you, do you believe that if you'll stay in faith, you'll receive that? I said, yes. He said, then why are you giving up? Because that, that was my, my emotional response was, well, it didn't work. And he said, faith always works. The word always works. And once you put your faith out there and you pray, unless you quit on your faith, you quit on your prayers, and you, you take the attitude, well, it didn't happen when I needed it or wanted it or thought it would. paid for him. Guess what? The 1973 Chevy Caprice. Well, uh, it took five years, so that was 1978, when that car came. Now, of course, it was five years old, but... Um, it was in really good shape, except it was a silver gray color and it, and it faded like silver gray tends to do. Not so much anymore, but back then. And uh, needed a couple tires. Other than that, the car was in great shape. And so, uh, you know, he, he delivered it to us and we received it and prayed with them. And we were so excited about it. And uh, literally the next Sunday, we drove it to church. And one of our members of our congregation owned a paint body shop. He said, Pastor, he says, your paint looks a bit faded. He said, would you mind if I took your car and took to my, my shop and do, give you a brand new professional uh, paint job on it? I said, no, not at all. So God gave us a brand new paint job on it. And then uh, it was a few weeks later, we drove down to Ed Dufresne's church for a special meeting. As we drove in the parking lot, one of the men who was an usher came out and said, um, Pastor, he says, uh, I just happened to notice your tires. You need a couple of tires on that car. I said, yes. He says, well, I looked at your other tires that are on there. They're, they're brand new. He says, I have two identical tires sitting in my garage. If you'll let me, I'll take the, your car while you're here in the service. I'll have the tires mounted and balanced and put on your car. So you'll have four new tires on your car. I gave him the keys. And I, I knew who the man was, so I trusted him. I gave him the keys. And when I came out here, I had a car that now had a new paint job on it and, and four new tires instead of just two. We drove that car. We loved it. It was so a, a blessing to us. And then the day came that a few years down the road where God spoke to us to give it and sow it into someone else's life. And we, we were obedient to do that. But the point I'm getting at is we stood for five years declaring we received a 1973 Chevy Caprice. And I learned two things out of that that I can share with you. The one is don't ever quit on your faith. I don't care what you're believing for. Don't give up. Don't quit. There's been a lot of things that we've prayed and literally within hours or days, we saw the manifestation. But then there's been other things we've had to stand and believe God and, and not quit and just take our stand in faith. And like the Bible says, after having done all, stand. In other words, don't quit. And so, but we've we've seen it come, the answer has come both ways. So the, the first thing is, don't quit on your faith and it won't quit on you. Uh, the uh, second thing is, when you're believing for things like cars, uh, we learn to believe at, from that instance the Lord spoke to me and said, now, the reason why you got a five-year-old car, because that's what you asked for. If you had just prayed for a new Chevy Caprice or a new car, he said, I would have given you that. And, and so I learned a second thing. When you're believing for things, uh, you know, don't put a time frame, a time date, uh, a year model or whatever it might be. Just begin to say, Father, I believe I received my new car. I believe I received my new home. I believe my wife has prayed for new clothes and, 
And literally within days, uh, she ends up with five brand new dresses. Uh, I've ended up with new suits. Uh, just a number of things over the years. So don't give up on your faith and don't limit God by setting a specific, uh, not just a time, but a, um, a, a, a like a, on a car, a model a year or something like that. And you'll know when, when things come up like that. But don't quit. Continue to stand. Continue to confess the word. Don't let the devil put the thoughts in your mind of doubt and unbelief, telling you it's not going to work. It hasn't worked. Who do you think you are? Things don't do work like that. And uh, that faith stuff doesn't work. Well, I'm telling you, it does work. Amen. All right. Um, I want to put a screen up over my pretty face. <laughs> so let me do that. I uh, want to give you the opportunity. This is our Sunday morning service. And so uh, as we've ministered, we've ministered the word, ministered prayer, uh, whatever the Spirit of God gave us to minister to you. Uh, now, the Bible in the support of them that do the teaching. Uh, and I'm not putting a condemnation on you or a guilt trip or anything like that. I'm just sharing with you what the Bible teaches. If we're ministering to you, then God declares that you ought to be sharing in the support of what we do. And we're reaching, I, I honestly do not have an accurate number right now because uh, some of the uh, social media platforms, as they've updated, they quit showing the number of views. Uh, but the last time we had a number, we were uh, at borderline uh, of 40,000 views per week. So I have to believe that it's increasing. But let's just say, we're reaching 40,000 views per week on average. Uh, do you realize that when you give and you sow financial seed into this ministry, that you are having an impact on no less than 40,000 people? Now, I've just heard recently that they say the average people per household has gone down a little bit. Now they say the average household is three people per household on, on an average. So if you multiply 40,000 times three, that's 120,000 potential viewers every week that we're impacting their lives with good news. When you sow seed into this ministry, you become part of that because you are the people who make this happen. Because you support this ministry, we're able to do this. I mean, I could be working a 40-hour week job, and I, I could probably make a really good money because there's a lot of things that I may I qualify for that pay big dollars. But my job is the ministry that God's called me to. You can help us not only in the support of us, but in the support of what we're doing, reaching out, touching people's lives with the word of God, with good news, with the anointing, with healing. And, and every time you support and give into this ministry, you are also getting credit because you are making it happen. And so God gives you credit for the, the results we're getting. You ought to praise God for that. I mean, there's a balanced book in heaven. God's got a record of, of what you do. And when you support ministries, you are credited with the, re, with the success that those ministries have. So join with us and believe God and um, pray for us. But uh, on the screen, you can see uh, how to give by check or money order. There's our address right below that. You see how to give by a debit or credit card. You can text or email the card information to us. We'll run the card for the amount you've uh, 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 stated. And then we will in instantly delete that information so nobody gets their hands on it. We don't allow anybody to see it. Uh, if you have uh, PayPal, Venmo, uh, Zelle, or Cash App, on the lower bar across there, uh, you can see how to give through those methods. Now, here's something I want to encourage you about. If at this moment you feel impressed to give, to support this ministry, help us to do what God's called us to do, uh, don't hesitate. Don't wait. Do it now. And here's the reason. Because if you don't act on that, the devil will begin and almost immediately to whisper in your ear, Put thoughts in your mind, oh, that's just emotion. Uh, that's just this or that's that. Uh, that's not God talking to you. Don't do that. You can't afford to. 
Our attitude is, I, we can't afford not to give. So you need to take the same attitude. Do it when, it, when that uh, inspiration, that impression happens, act on it right away so you don't get talked out of it. Amen? All right, praise God. Father, I pray for every person watching this program, whether it's today or tomorrow, next week, next it doesn't matter. Father, because there's no time and distance in the spiritual realm. So I pray for every person that, Father, you will minister to their hearts if they're being blessed and encouraged and taught uh, by this ministry, that you will minister to them about becoming uh, a part of what we're doing by their giving, sowing seeds that will bring a harvest. Father, your word declares that when they give, it will come back to them good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, that you will cause men to give into their bosom. Jesus said that whatever we give for the gospel's sake will come back in, to us in this life. And he said as much as 100 times as much as the seed they sowed. But Father, we use our faith. Pastor Mary and I use our faith. And we agree with them, with every person, with you today that are giving. That it's going to come back supernaturally multiplied many times over. You'll recognize this ministry is good soil to sow into. And it, it, the seed you sow is producing a great harvest, an abundant harvest. Now, if you don't ho have a home church, God's been ministering to you on tithing. We are uh, uh, an online church, an online ministry. I stood in front of a congregation for 47 years uh, and pastored it behind the pulpit. And, and then God spoke to us when we moved here to, be, to take the same ministry, uh, our Sunday morning service, our Tuesday night Bible study, and then our, actually added our Thursday's Word, and do it online because people are online all the time, it seems like, and they need to hear the Word just like you need to hear the word. And so uh, we've done that. And we are an online church. It doesn't mean I don't preach at other places. And God opens doors. I get invited. We'll go minister in churches. Uh, but right now, this is what God impressed us to do. So we're an online church. And uh, we have, you know, 501c3, and, and, you know, nonprofit organization. And what we'll do is we'll issue you a tax deductible receipt at, uh, after the end of the year, like hopefully in January, uh, to uh, get a letter out to you for the amount you gave, and as, that's all tax deductible. Amen. So be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, in the name of Jesus. Now, just one more. Uh, well, let me see. Um, I want to mention something about prophets. There's a lot of people on, on the Internet they claim to be prophets and prophetesses. Unfortunately, not every person that says they are, are. And you need to be very sensitive to the Spirit. First of all, when somebody prophesies something, first judge it by the Word. You don't judge the person, but judge the Word by the Word of God. If it doesn't agree with the written Word of God, then you have to reject it. If it's not something that confirms, see, prophecy confirms something usually that... Um, God maybe has been dealing with you on. If it doesn't confirm something and it deals with you personally, uh, put it on the shelf. Uh, if it's from God, it'll come to pass. And you don't have to pressure, get pressured all over because, oh, it's not happening. Well, now there's a lot of people that claim to be prophets that are prophesying a lot of gloom and doom, uh, prophesying a, a crash of our economy, prophesying this and that and other thing. Uh, all bad news. But I appreciate what Jesse DePlantis uh, said about the people that are talking you know, about World War III. And, and Jesse DePlantis said uh, on his last, after his last message this week at the convention, uh, he said some powerful things that really uh, just hit home with me. Uh, that the people that we think want to start World War III are not willing to do that because they know there's reciprocation. And they'd all die. You know, both countries would disappear. And they don't want that. They want to leave a legacy. They want to have a name in history. So they want to try and bully their way into a place of power and authority and, and you know, a great leader over other countries. But that's, that's just the natural man trying to leave a legacy for himself. 
but they're not going to do that. Now, there may be wars because the Bible says in the end times, there'll be wars and rumors of wars. Well, we've got some wars going on right now, but we have rumors of wars all over the place. Do not be moved by that. Trust God. God has a better plan for you than, than the world has for you. Better for you than all the false prophets that are prophesying doom and gloom, death and destruction. And the thing attached to that is the Bible says, whatever you bind is bound. Whatever you loose is loosed. So we've started to come against, every time we hear one of these prophecies of doom and gloom, death and destruction, we come against it. If God reveals something that the devil has planned, our job, he's telling us not so we can sit by and watch it happen. He's telling us so that we can do something about it. He's given us dominion, authority, power over all the work of the enemy. And so we need to use that in the name of Jesus, the Bible says, what you bind is bound. So I say in the name of Jesus, I bind every strategy, every plan, every weapon the devil's tried to form against us as a nation, as a people, as believers in, in, the, in the things of God. I bind up every one of these weapons, the, the enemy, the devil, and these people in the world that are following the leading of demonic um, uh, plans. over it. Bind it up and then declare every time you think about it. It comes up inside you or you hear a news report. You say, no, no, I bound that up. What I bind is bound. I loose the power of God. I loose healing. I loose what, and the devil lies to you and tells you, no, I, I already prayed about that. I loosed my healing in my life. I loosed uh, pre, uh, peace in that situation. Peace between leaders. Peace between nations. See, you've got power and authority in this world. Use it. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, well, I've, I've said enough. Listen, you guys have a blessed day, a blessed week. We'll be back here Tuesday night. We're back to our regular schedule. We're out of convention now, and uh, we're back to our regular schedule. So look forward to seeing you Tuesday night uh, in in the, uh, what, the mid uh, <clears throat> central time zone, uh, 9 o'clock. If you're on the East Coast, uh, it's, uh, what, 10 o'clock. West Coast is 7 o'clock. So uh, join us for our one-hour Bible study, and we get into the Word and share some good things with you, and so we encourage you to do that. And then on Thursday's Word, make sure that you uh, click follow uh, or notification or subscribe uh, so that you can be notified when we come on, because Thursday's Word is not on a set schedule. It's sometime in the afternoon on Central Time. Uh, we never know exact time because that's a day we've got a lot of things we deal with. But we'll be bringing a word of 20 minutes, an exhortation. It'll help you finish the week strong. So make sure you get on that. Before you leave, click the like button, click the share button, click the follow button or subscribe and notification. And leave us a comment if you say nothing more than I was watching. Just all of that triggers the algorithms to promote our programming to more people. So help us reach more people by doing that. Amen. We love you guys, and uh, we will see you Tuesday night.